Hello, my friends. Jacob is here once again. Happy Tuesday to you. And I didn't want to do this show. I don't want to talk about this subject matter. It's not something that's pleasant. I don't think that it's actually something that a bunch of young kids should be watching. I know a lot of the, a lot of the children like to watch this show, too. Maybe this is not the best show because we're talking about some things uh, that really aren't that pleasant. Uh, the Catholic Church and the abuse and all the stuff that's been going down. For a couple of years, I have talked about how the truth is going to come out. I'm not the only one. It's obvious, you know, it's obvious this religious system is corrupt to the core. But now the highest levels, the highest levels of the church, we're talking Pope Francis's boy himself, convicted, convicted. But that's not all. A lot of very, very cool things relating to this that just were, uh, that just kind of bubbled to the surface within the last 24 hours. It's like one thing after another thing, symbolically saying something that I think needs to be said. Babylon is fallen, fallen indeed. So I hope that you are buckled up, people, because this is going to be one eye-opening show. Welcome back. Okay, so this is not going to be a very funny show. It's not going to be. I'm sorry. I can't really make light of this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, if you want something goofy, go check out the one that I just did or the day before or pretty much any other show, right? Pretty much any other show. The, this is, this is uh, abuse in its highest form. This is the reason why there are people that don't believe in God today. They have no faith today. Religion has 100% killed the truth of God within the hearts of everybody. Now, religion's been doing this a long time, and it is the story of why Jesus has put to death symbolically the truth and the way and the life that's within us being put to death because the chief priests and elders and all the council sought a false witness against Jesus to put him to death. And just as they literally lied about Jesus, literally to put him to death, so they've been lying to all of us so we would never find the truth nor would we ever find our way home or be set free but today that all changes and i've been waiting and a lot of people have been waiting for the scary horrible devastating truth of how corrupt this system is to be revealed After all of the things that have been revealed over the years. Now, Cardinal Pell. Now, he was convicted a while back, but the court put a gag order on that. That's right. They said nobody could report about this because, of course, it's the Catholic Church, right? So they had everybody working very, very cleverly and then behind the scenes to make sure that nobody could find out. But today, the news is out. Once the third most powerful man in the Vatican and Australia's most senior Catholic has been found guilty of child sexual abuse. And we're not talking just like, you know, doing terrible things to a child. We're talking the most horrible thing that you can do to a child. Uh, and, and he did this to children 16 years of age and under. A jury delivered a unanimous decision in this. The verdict was December 11th. Can you believe we're just hearing about this? I talked about it. I talked about how there are rumblings about this in the background, right? Francis appointed this guy. So now you got the Pope, right? You got Mr. Pope, Mr. I'm gonna pull the world religions together into one. This corrupt system trying to do everything it can to maintain control and power, right? And uh, this dude, he set him up, set him up. He was one of the members of what they call the C9s. powerful group of advisors that Pope Francis himself appointed. This guy was like uh, Francis is one of his closest aides. They called him uh, Rambo because he was so, you know, he was so, he was a very, very staunch man. 
this guy's also, he was the, the Vatican's treasurer. Yeah, he was the guy who was in charge of the money. Ugh. I mean, if that is not the most symbolic representation of this religious corrupt system, I don't know what is. Pell. This dude, Pell. Look at what his name means. man who abused children. He was a man that, uh, that raped children. He was a man who I hope, uh, I hope is an example for everyone that gave up on their belief of God and understand that religion and God are not the same thing. He's a man that uh, I know will get his just rewards for this because God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. It's a law. It's, uh, some people call it karma. It's a real thing. What you put out, you get back in return. So, now the irony, you want to talk about disgusting? That the Pope actually praised Pell for being honest about what he did. <laughs> praised him. Yeah, he previously praised Pell for his honesty in response to child sexual abuse. Has yet to publicly react to the conviction, though. So what are you going to say, Francis? This is your top guy. This is the fruit. You're the head of the church. This is your top guy. The, uh, as as uh, w one article put it, poison is from the top all the way down to the bottom. That's how corrupt this religious system is. So this terrible thing. This terrible thing, right? As this happens, I stumble upon another little bit of news, which I thought was so symbolically wonderful and, uh, and beautiful that I, I have to talk about it. In Dublin, Ireland, there is this ancient... Uh, Catholic Church called St. Michon's, and um, it's known for having a crypt. A couple of mummies, right? It's got, it's got like a nun, it's got like a thief, and it's got the Crusader, right? People from everywhere would flock to see these dust-ridden uh, mummies that have been around for like 800 years. Well, guess what happened? I think this is so crazy. Thieves have stolen the head of the 800-year-old mummy known as the Crusader. And then they flipped them over, and then they desecrated the rest of the tombs. Now, I know that this is, the church is saying that this is such an unholy act. This is a terrible act. The crusader would be symbolic of those who crusaded, right? Those who, who made it their crusade to spread the Catholic faith. And if you know anything about the crusades, it was very bloody. It was very horrible. You know how many people were put to death for not believing in the church? Yeah. Horrible. Horrible, the abuses that have been... Um, that have been, and I know that I know that a lot of you probably are Catholic, and I, you know that doesn't mean that there aren't great priests and there aren't great bishops and there aren't great cardinals. I'm not saying that. That doesn't mean that you can't go to your church and still get fed. But don't think that that is the source of God's love and truth, because it ain't. All right, God does not dwell in buildings made with man's hands. It's written right there. Don't you know that you're the temple of God? You want to know where God is, right? All these atheists that say, it's, I can't believe because the church is so corrupt. Okay, so let me explain. Let me explain. Okay, so imagine this man, he represented a crusader for the Catholic Church. Okay, he represented the old guard, and now he was decapitated, and his head, his authority, the head is symbolic of your authority, the rules, where you think. The head, right? Christ is the head of the church. So the crusader's head, it's a symbol of this crusade for religion to control. It was just taken away. That's right. It was just stolen. And the body flipped over, turned onto its backside to show its shame. I think it's a beautiful thing. I know that a lot of people are saying that it's terrible. You know, the, the Archbishop of Dublin said that I'm shocked that someone would target these ancient burial places and desecrate the remains of those lying in it. But yet, don't you see that this church has desecrated the body of believers for how many years? It's about time that the head was stolen and taken away. Not just that.
but just in uh, the last 24 hours here in my hometown in, in New York, Nueva York, right? Strong Island. It wasn't in Strong Island, but it was in Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn. A statue was stolen. Another statue. Stolen. It was like news in New York here. Parishioners of St. Thomas Aquinas Church on 9th Street, it's a pretty, uh, pretty popular church in Brooklyn, uh, couldn't believe when they saw the surveillance video. Someone went in and stole the icon, the idol of the Virgin Mary, which would be symbolic of the mother of the church, the mother of their church. It's just insane to me that all of this stuff is going down at the same time. Maybe there's not a connection, maybe there is, but I do find it quite coincidental. You know what else I find coincidental? Because, of course, once I realized that this was a symbol of, of this religious system losing its control and being exposed for how terrible it is, I said to myself, there must be something else. There must be a day on the horizon when there is no religion, there is no system or caste system. Today's news in India. Recently, Tamil Nadu, who is an atheist. Now, I don't think that anybody should be. I mean, I don't know. I, when I talk to people and they say they're an atheist, I say, but you exist, right? So you exist. Where'd you come from? <laughs> Have you ever known non-existence? Why do you think when your body, your physical body dies, that, uh, that you're just not going to exist anymore? How, how do you know that? And you, you, you want a little more proof? When you have a dream at night, you exist as some phantom body in a dream. You, uh, sometimes you're different people. Sometimes you're in different worlds. Sometimes you can do amazing, super amazing things like fly, right? Or sometimes you're scared and you're being chased. Or sometimes, but yet in that dream, this whole reality that's constructed, it feels real, it sounds real, it smells real. And yet you wake up, the real you was in that body, in that dream, but when that dream was over, you didn't stop existing. You came back to here. Row, row, row your boat. Life is but a dream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Gently down the stream we go until it becomes a flowing river of truth. And that's what's on the horizon for us all. So when I saw this, the country's very first religionless, castless woman, be recognized by the government. It's a new day. It's a new day, right? It's a new day indeed. Now, I am not against religion, okay? Even though uh, it comes from the Latin word, which means to bind together, <laughs> right? I would rather be free. But I'm not against, I'm not against religion. I'm against bad religion. I'm against abuse. I'm a, uh, uh, against the, the powers that be keeping us in chains of ignorance and bondage and fear and shame and hate and self-loathing. And that day is over. The authority of the crusader was taken away. The lies of the church and the abuse of this church system exposed for what it is and now being held accountable. And now the truth is out. So I hope that each and every one of you decide not to put your faith in man because man is a liar, but put your faith in more. That's why on the channel I have a little, I have a little, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor, hit the smash the like button, subscribe, share the videos around. I need the help. It's very important. But if you're new to the channel, what I do on a pretty regular basis, I don't tell you what to believe, but what I do say is spend some time on your own and just say, teach me the truth no matter what the cost. Want more, live for more, because you are more than you know. And I love each and every one of you, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.